Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're back with another exciting episode of Silent Hunter 5. Uh, Minimum speed ahead. Where we last left off, you guys got a little sneak peek into background recording that I had no intention of getting in there. This is why I should watch what I'm uploading before I upload it. Uh, so anyway, the time acceleration button to decrease the time is right next to the button I have to record. So when I'm hammering away on the drop speed, sure enough, the record is going off. Also, uh, I, I noticed that sighted bearing two, two, nine. some of my talking wasn't being picked up. I'm sure some of you are saying that's a great thing. You talk too much already, history nerd. Uh, so when I do my little cutaway takes to do like the transition shots, I hit the toggle on my microphone to mute it. So you guys don't hear me doing whatever it is I'm in the background doing while I'm recording uh, the five or seven second little shot, right? So the problem is, this toggle isn't, like, it's it's a meaty toggle, but it doesn't always work. So, yeah, FYI, if in the past or in the future there's a big long section of me that doesn't talk, it's because um, the microphone never got turned back on. So, it's a ghetto operation I run here, ladies and gentlemen. None of you should be surprised by that. Uh, what's the dealio, yo? What are we up to, History Nerd? Well, it is late November, November 24th, 1939, and I've selected a mission over here that doesn't appear to be showing up. Uh, patrol the area assigned, reach the area, and start the operations. Well, because you're not telling me where that area is, uh, I happen to know it's Northern Ireland, but we're not, we're not heading over there. Or maybe we will. I don't know. But I'm going to focus on the British Northern Patrol just because it seems like any action in our operations down here is idi- Excuse me. Is idiotic because the RAF is like a supergroup from the 1970s and will absolutely make my day Three, five, uh, <laughs> as you've course. all seen, unhappy. Course, so, three, nobody wants three, that. Four. Nobody wants the RAF to make you unhappy. Well, maybe the RAF does, but those guys New are jerks. So, we don't want to have to deal with them. Um, course, so, yeah, one, what we're going to be doing is just course, heading up six, north, two. and then sort of looping five. around. I mean, that's ridiculous. We don't need to have right angle turns. Uh, in naval maneuvering, but if we were to do something like this, we should have far less in the way of airplane obstructions. In fact, we can just take that last waypoint out. Uh, we should have far less in, in aircraft in, in intrusions, obstructions, and be able to get to the, the fleets we're looking to hit mucho, mucho faster. Uh, what else can we do? Well, I mean, obviously, we got a new boat. Let's actually press W to walk around and not E. We got two any aircraft guns, which is lovely. Most importantly, we've got our Tiger Stripes, which is sighted. Bearing one, eight. the world's greatest camouflage ever made. We got our Grey Wolf emblems on either side of the conning tower. I kind of like it better if it's in the middle. Because that way ships you're chasing down can see you. But, you know, whatever. At least this way people on our sides know it's us as well. Yes, sir. Uh, how's the family? My wife complains the kids are behaving like rascals. Yes. Uh, but what about your feelings going to war with the English and the French? I have family in England. My wife in France. Ship sighted. Bearing two, two, four. I knew we'd get there eventually. I know you like to pay, play pranks, Dieter, but please spare the first watch officer. He won't be amused. That guy is so stiff, you could put a rudder on him and call him a torpedo. Okay, I'll lay off him. But somebody needs to pull that broomstick out of his... That's enough, I get the picture. He is who he is. Not up to us to change him. Besides, he's got friends in very high places. We'll only spell trouble if that we don't want. You have my word, Captain. He won't even know I'm here. That yes, is sir. highly Ships unlikely, two, Dieter. Four, two. You are quite the powerful personality. While we sail out of port, we, of course, will check in with the rest of the crew to get everyone's morale up. Uh, Eric, how's it going? Captain, I would like a word with you. What's what's wrong now? Captain, your crew has been what an outrage! They have been insulting me behind my back. 
This cannot be tolerated. I insist you put an end to this loot conduct or I shall have it reported. Okay, I'll talk to the boss immediately. But really, don't worry, buddy, okay? Just... Just deal. Uh... It's a triumph of will. How much combat experience do you have? And are you in support of this war? Ooh. But of course. And you're not? Well, now I've been added to a list back home, haven't I, Emil? Yeah, you know what's up, buddy. Uh, how's the wife, Yosef? Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, what do you think of the new number one? Let's hope he's got as much talent as he's got connections. Yeah. Uh, what do you think we're ready for this war? Ready? Do you honestly believe a handful of U-boats is going to bring the Tommies to their knees? I certainly don't. We are going to need a better plan if you want to beat them. Yeah, you've, you've got a lot of valid points there. Uh, and you didn't even make many points, but everyone you made, pretty damn valid. Uh, what's up, Wolfram? How's your brother? He's fine, Lieutenant. Um, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Have you met the new Lieutenant? Uh, have you heard from Captain Ron yet? No, Hekalon, but I'll let you know as soon as I do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoa, Peter? How are you doing? Yep, that's that's good. Uh, since you're the ears of the submarine, what's the latest gossip? We've been through there. Are you afraid to be at war? Yes, a little bit. Especially of those British destroyers. I sure hope I hear them before they get too close. Oh, don't be too worried. Those destroyers are louder than a herd of elephants. You'll hear them coming from miles away. It, that's especially your job, so I'm pleased to know you're nervous about destroyers, because you should be keeping your ears wide open. Nobody down there to talk to. So let's go talk. Whoa, we are definitely going the wrong way. We should. It feels like we should have more torpedoes than two here. Um, and, and we should, but I guess. Okay, they're someplace else. That's, that's a thing. It's fine. Whoop. Running through the bridge. Bosun! Uh, I need to talk to you about the first watch officer. What appears to be the problem, Captain? Uh, our number one is a little sensitive. Complaints about the crew mocking him. I say, do nothing. He needs to toughen up a bit. Uh, are you still writing in like that you. book? Of course you are. How do you feel about having to fight the Royal Navy? I'm mortified. Of course, I don't show that, especially not to the crew. Good, but again, this man here is definitely yeah, listening in on everything you say. What do you think the crew needs most at this moment? Success. The odds are so against us, we need to know that we can beat those Tommies. Yeah, Success. I mean, I get... We got we got the ham and the salamis and, and some bananas. Good. We'll be out for a while. I feel like this crew's been fairly successful Kevin? already. Hackle, I see you brought your violin string. You uh, have you met our new lieutenant? You mean the pirate? He looks like a real stiff. But as long as he doesn't complain about the food, I don't have any problem with him. Oh, that's good. You try some uh, so are you ready for this war, sir? Ball ready, Captain. Germany has suffered long enough. Submarine Time side. we fight back. It's one you of us, try some Aaron? Aaron? Thanks, buddy. Uh, it's interesting that uh, the, the cook of all people is the most militant of the crew. Well, I say the most militant. There's also Eric, but... This is a man who's walking around in a brown shirt uniform, so you'd, you'd know he's serious about the party. Right, Dieter? I see we've got a slight, a little adjustment to course here. We should be able to make it just fine, right? We will straighten out. Lovely. Okay, on the well, horizon. guys, Three, um, four. I think that's it. Oh, and the crew's even talking. I should have realized that far sooner than now. Uh, I think we got that pretty much covered. Uh, promotion points. We got to. Let's spend those on something. So maybe Benno? What do we got? Reduces darkness penalty. And uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, increase its detection range and response time. Does sound good for hunting, doesn't it? What else have we got? We could probably do... The safe communications level two and three, but I don't know. Do we care about radio and radar? Not. I mean, probably not as much as we should. I guess. Really, I could just throw these in, because I should start using Max as he's meant to be used more often than basically uh, as ballast way up in the front of the ship, sitting there not doing a damn thing. We shall see. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a blast of an intro, but we gotta get ready 
and on our way to sink some British ships. So I'll see you guys when we've got something far more exciting to sink or shoot at or summon. So we'll see you guys in a bit. I'm reminded of the Bone Thugs and Harmony song, See at the Crossroads. What, it, I'm, I'm of two minds here. So one, we've got our mission objective in the Northwestern Approaches over here. And we know that this is a populated area for sure. Um, we will be able to find targets over here. And in fact, there are two relatively good spots to sort of camp out um, above this entrance into all these ports. And sort of right here with this entrance to like everything. Everything will be coming through Northern Ireland to head out to the rest of the world. Well, maybe not, you know, south, but any North American convoys are gonna be coming past Northern Ireland. But, ah, we do have uh, a very old contact here. Like this is about half a day old. So I'm not thinking we're gonna be able to hunt down these convoys or this convoy in particular here, but I do happen to know that there are Navy convoys, Royal Navy convoys coming up to get into Trondheim and Narvik, places of that nature. And uh, we're right here. It's not going to be, we don't even need to really enter the space of the Royal Air Force. I mean, we're in the space of the Royal Air Force right now. But if we plop our submarine down here and hang out for a couple of days, I'm sure something will come along and be worth investigating. So, you know what? No, this isn't like Bone Thugs and Harmony C with the crossroads at all. This is this is more of a new waypoint. Course we're just gonna reposition. 62. So I'm gonna I'm gonna point my sub this way. Now maybe I won't. What we'll do is we'll just get into position up here, and then probably lay up some kind of patrol that may even take us all the way up to Narvik. I do. I mean, I know this area from from previous lives going through for the the invasion of Norway. This actually isn't a bad spot, taking a look at it, to set up a blockade. Because, I mean, anything going into Narvik, granted, it might not be a lot, but anything going into Narvik does indeed have to come through here. And, my word, what a choke point that is. Regardless, I think for now we'll stop here to see if we can get things going into Tron time as well. Presuming, of course, we see any Allied ships down here over the course of a day or two. If we don't, then we'll just, you know, head back west. But we do know they're heading in this direction, so there's my thought process. Besides, you know, I mean, not like we can actually see the difference in geography. What, what a calm day. No wonder we're making 12 or 13 knots uh, going speed, too. This is, this is perfect U-boating weather, without a doubt. Uh, so yeah, off to off to the northern bits of Norway. We will see you guys when I got something exciting to share. See you in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's just after 3.30 in the morning. There's nobody around. The crew is, is you know, we've... We've done some great things. We've been up. We've made it up into a... Man, like when we go to war against Norway, Trondheim is going to be one hell of a port. To get into? Pain in the ass. To raid? Might be fun. It's like, because, I mean, there's so many things that could go wrong here. There's only one way. There's only one way out. It's a neat little port. Granted, we haven't really discovered anybody or anything yet. No British convoys, no Norwegian convoys, no convoys of the sort. How's it going, crew? Everybody having a great evening? Crash dive. Let's do a drill. So, let's do a crash dive drill. Why not? We got over 400 meters of depth. We're doing just fine. Let's just test the crew. Current depth, one, zero meters. Engage electric motors. I'll say we got under depth, two zero meters impressively quickly there. Current depth three zero meters. Current depth four zero meters. What I like about crash diving is like in game. Current depth five zero meters. The sub gets so tilted down that I can't. I can't make Current it to depth, talk to my crew. Six, zero meters. I'm stuck here. 
60 meters under, we're starting to level out. Right, because what's the depth we wind up going here? It's like, is it 60? Current depth, seven, zero meters. I don't know. We're gonna we're, we're stabilizing at 70 meters, which feels like I mean we could go even deeper than that. I think. Let's cut the engines. All stop. And I mean, first off, Benno, are you picking anything up down here, buddy? Gotta like hammer my headset to the to the left ear just to make sure I can hear anything and we got nothing under here. That's fine. But good work, crew. I don't know. I don't know how long it took us, but it doesn't feel like it took us. It took us maybe a minute to get 70 meters underwater, 80 meters underwater. I mean that's not bad. That's very deep, as you can see. Very deep. Now our submarine could, of course, uh, go deeper than that. We could go Current depth, eight, zero meters. 150 if we wanted to. Give or take. Again, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, this is like elevator weight. Um, it says don't go below 150, but we can probably make it to 200 me. I don't 200 meters sounds maybe a little ridiculous. We could try it with a with a full hull. Which we do have. Never seen how deep one of these things can go. I don't think today is the day, though. I think after a successful crash dive drill at 3.30 in the morning, we've done enough. We can get ourselves surface on the boat. surface. And, um... Yeah, there's not much going down around here. So we'll head back down around Bergen. We'll see if, if we come across anything coming up. This is still that same convoy that dragged me off on this little uh, Norwegian side adventure as it is and if we don't see anything on our way the nice thing is like again we're just gonna skirt around the RAF and come out over yonder so that ain't too bad we're slowly coming up I mean I understand that not having the engine spinning is gonna make this a little difficult but um, that's okay let's get Slow those engines rolling ahead. And like I say, with, point, with the calm course, waters, one, four, I guess we don't nine. even need to Return do any of that, course, do we? We're heading this direction, course, history one, nerd. One, we can we can just head this direction. Um, New way point, yeah, with the course, with the seas being three, as calm as they five, have been, I've been making like I say, twelve or thirteen knots at speed two, which means the fuel savings is off the hook. And I know there's there's different groups of people out there who are like. Hey, why don't you just go full speed ahead all the time and get there much, much quicker? Uh, go watch my first season to see why there's no way in hell I'm doing that. And I understand we're not that far away. We're not, you know, we're not far from bases or anything of that nature. It's just the way I'm, I'm playing the game. So anyway, guys, I will see you when I got some exciting to share. See you in a bit. Recharging batteries. <laughs> oh, flashbacks to Silent Hunter 4. <laughs> We're in shallow water, Captain. Really? How? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are. Uh, okay, Dieter. Let's, um... Minimum speed ahead. Let's fix this problem. How bad... How bad could that have been? Horribly bad. Um... Well, we all know what happens when you run, run aground. You run aground in Lorient. You make the headlines of some papers. You run aground on a random island off the coast of Norway. You don't. You just wind up uh, living your life, not even with island girls and martinis on the beaches. This is just like, damn, life sucks. <laughs> all right. Any more islands? We are uh, in shallow waters, Captain. I'm, I'm aware now, Dieter. Thank you. Any more islands notwithstanding. I'll see you guys uh, when we got something more exciting to share. See you in a bit.
All right, so uh, we've made it way out to the North Sea, which is good. Um, what else? So I've got this area here in the circle pointed out as sort of my... I don't even know what to call it. My own personal little patrol area. It's like, what, 200, 300 kilometers in circumference? And I was just going to run a patrol there. As it was coming around, we picked up a radio contact of these guys, which I'm assuming is some kind of convoy. And uh, so I plotted an intercept course. Now, we should be hitting this very shallow bank uh, well before they do. So my plan is to sort of camp out here for a day or two. Um, I think we got the time to do that. April 1st, 1940, we have got the time to do that. Uh, that mission is now gone, so we'll have to see if we actually completed that mission or not, and we should also keep our eyes open for anything going on up in Norway, because I think the invasion of Norway should be happening relatively soon-ish. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're just gonna want to keep our eye up on that, because that is some good renown in battleships and other warships if we can sink them as they're going to Narvik. I hope we can sink them as they're going to Narvik. They are moving quick, so we get like one shot at it. Don't miss our chance to blow. Um, yeah, so like I say, we're going to be parking ourselves. Give me my head. Thank you very much. Parking ourselves up over of all the places to intercept them. Really, it's it's this bank of shallowness. But that's okay. Hopefully we see them. If not, I'll just hit this patrol. And I will see you guys, hopefully, with something exciting and blowy-uppy excitement. So, yeah. We'll see you guys in a bit. Alright. So, way out in the distance. We can see two relatively large ships. They are reporting as warships we can tell that by the blue line but these don't look like destroyers to me and and really any other true warship wouldn't just be sailing uh in groups of two like you would you would expect to see destroyers in groups of two or four you would expect to see any other warship in a larger fleet with a destroyer escort because you don't want to lose ships big ships to submarines but these two here tell me that these guys are troop ships so that means two things one they're going to be good for renown because they're going to be big troop ships two these are going to look like freighters but be armed to the teeth so we're not going to want to engage these guys on the surface these are going to be complete and total um torpedo kills preferably from underwater, because um, that is the way of things. Now, we they're still too far out to get a lock, which is fine, but because the seas are so gentle today, um, you know, we're, we're able to get a visual lock on them when they're nine kilometers-ish out. Um, so the plan, really, because it's night, and because... Um, you know, they hopefully haven't seen us. I don't see how they could have seen us. Uh, we are going to play the Silent Hunter role as well as we can. Pop the periscope down and then just let time acceleration here do the trick. Now, I sort of plotted this course out. So we'll see how accurate my guesstimation was here, but I imagine this should be pretty good. All right. So we got the two of them coming in on a very nice angle, I might add. And they are a whopping ooh, two and three kilometers out. Let's just get time sped up a little bit more. And now I'm liking, I'm liking these shot placements. So, uh, let's get ourselves a lock. <clears throat> Do we want to identify these suckers? I mean, I feel like we got the time, and I probably should have done this a little bit earlier. But we know that these guys are going to be troop transport ships, 
And I'm betting... I mean... It's tough to tell from out here, but I would not go against these being a Ralpindi. What are our other options? I guess there's a Felix. It's definitely not a landing ship. It could just be a medium troop transport. Um, it could be a big modern passenger ship. But all of these basically look like they're the same design of ship. So let's go. Because these are showing up as warships, we'll go with the Armed Merchant Cruiser, which gives us a depth of about like so. Depth set to five and meters. I'm just going to assume these are the same ship. So uh, thank you very much. We'll break the lock. Turn that off. Acquire a lock. These guys are moving like it's going out of style. We'll put this torpedo to speed two. two break the lock and fire. Then we'll acquire this guy and we'll put this guy to speed three at about roughly the same depth. Right, that should be good. And we'll loose that guy as well. So. I'm, oh my god, are you kidding me? That would have been on the first ship, right? Okay, so let's go. We gotta do this again. Get you up to, like, meters. speed three here. Premature detonation probably means that they saw the explosion as well. So here's hoping this will go swimmingly. It looks like we're going to get a hit on transport number two. Torpedo impact. And I think if I take a look at the minimap... Oh, darn. It isn't. I was hoping that would be a confirmed kill, but alas, tis not. Uh, hopefully she slows down, though. Now, the trick is, of course, this front ship may start pulling some maneuvers, dipping, dodging, ducking, and diving. Hopefully, not enough to dodge that torpedo, but I am going to go out on a limb and suggest that, yes, indeed, he has dodged that torpedo. That sucks balls, but at least we hit one. That premature detonation, man, I'm telling you, it's done screwed us depth. over. Set to four meters. So, well, what can we do? We Target can try marked. to go for this guy Two, again. And we'll see what comes of that. And then we'll just have to watch and wait to see what happens to the ship. Torpedo missed, sir. That ship. That's not looking so hot. Whoever the captain of this ship is. Yeah, he knows. He knows what's going on. So, with all of our tubes expended and one shot hitting only... And it doesn't even look like it hit to the point of causing too much damage underwater. I mean, certainly the damage above water uh, with the fires we can see. But um, I'm concerned. Well, now. So here's a question as I get cheaty. Taking a look at these ships. Can those turrets spin around to cover the rear of the ship? Because if they can't, then I am fine surfacing to put a couple shells into the rear of these suckers. But I'd rather not, you know, take enough damage to, to find that out. And this ship is getting fairly front heavy fairly quickly. So we can safely assume it is taken on water. As you can see, it's bum, it's almost out. Which should slow it down considerably. And I imagine that it will be. I have a feeling this guy is uh, gone. Like, we should consider this to be a single ship and not two. So let's drop our periscope. Even though we know that we, we know they know we're here. Let's try and position ourselves. Torpedo missed, sir. Two, one, ready. To at least potentially get another shot 
on the ship we damaged. Because I would like to make sure this ship goes down. And that guy can just continue on with life as if nothing ever happened. So what I'm hoping for here is this ship just can't maneuver as well as it would like. And so we should theoretically be able to get a second torpedo hit on this guy relatively nicely. Oh my god! Two of them! I can absolutely tell you where... Oh, why did the tooltip go away? Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. <sighs> we are definitely going to be investing in our Torpedo Man. Two premature detonations, both in the same amount of time is... Well, not in the same amount of time. On the same effing patrol is, in a word, uh, upsetting. I think that's the only real way to put it. I'm upset. We can try and reposition again. I don't really want to play. Wow, we're pulling five knots underwater? Willie, you know what you're doing when it comes to a U-boat engine. I will tell you that. Two, two, yeah, these ready. guys are definitely getting the F out of Dodge. Let's check on the damaged freighter troop ship. Whatever he may be, I think, I think we're going to get this guy sunk. That is a hell of a lot of water for this guy to pull on. We can see up front, well, I guess not quite. Yeah, the decks are not almost a wash up front. But, with the engines being this hot, well, I guess they're still low enough. <clears throat> to be able to uh, continue on their merry way. Can we get an estimate of their speed? No. no that is that is not functioning. Probably for the same reason my crew tooltips have disappeared. I guess ahead. we can kick this up to half speed ahead. But to be honest, oh no, we got tons of battery power. We can continue this, this chase uh, for a little while longer. And I guess, at 2.3 kilometers, we're still looking pretty good here. Torpedo depth set to three meters. Target marked. Firing as long as this doesn't detonate prematurely, of course. Now, I saw he did pull a little maneuver. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at that! Lucky bastard. If we had made that torpedo slower... Which is maybe something I should be doing. We shouldn't be looking at this like... Hey, we want to hit this guy as quick as we can. We want to hit this guy as accurately as we can. And to do that, I guess would be uh, slower torpedoes, maybe? Are these guys even miss, separating? Two, one, Not ready. really, they're still keeping close. Eventually this guy's got to slow down. Eventually the drag on the front, now the decks are awash. Like, he should be very slow now. Because you look at all this water he's plowing through, there's absolutely no way they should be able to keep pace with his undamaged friend. Are we finally... We're not, but that, that propeller is not spinning. So I would have to imagine sooner than later this guy's going to be dead in the water, which is good. Oh! I, this guy is absolutely dead in the water, uh, quite literally. So let's see what it is that we sunk. Uh, whatever it is, it's big. A patro patro patroculus? 
who comes up with names like this? Seriously. It's an armed merchant, 11,000 tons. That is honestly not bad. Now, the torpedo situation could be better. I will not disagree with you there, but... Um, that ship sinking. I mean, 11,000 tons? Sure, it's not a carrier battle group, but it's still a fair amount. What we're going to do is cut our minimum speed down speed to ahead. minimum and just head the absolute opposite direction uh, from this guy. Oh, and for those wondering, like, me complaining about this being shallow? Depth under keel is 91 meters, Captain. Like, sure, it's shallow for the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, but it, you've still got 100 meters space uh, to play, which is more than you need with a U-boat. Anyway, we'll let this guy go. We will head back this way and um, take stock of the ship. Plenty of fuel. Battery's not a concern. It's really just the torpedoes. We still got four full tubes and an external reserve sitting happy, so we can still do a little bit of hunting if we so choose. And we probably will choose to. Anyway, guys, I will see you when I got something exciting to share. See you in a bit. All right, so, Benno's picked up a lone freighter. I think what we're going to do New waypoint. Course is just come get this guy on the surface. A lone freighter, one-on-one -on -one with the Grey Wolf, should be easy pickings for us, in theory. Um, I mean, there's, there's chances that this guy could be armed... But, generally, at this stage of the war, thank you, don't lock in me, thank you. No, we're, we're going up on deck, that's fine. Um, well, geez, look at the amount of spray we're kicking up. Thankfully, the oceans are still pretty calm. Uh, yeah, so anyway, with it being a lone freighter, and we can definitely see that there is just a singular engine contact there, chances are it won't be armed. Chances are it'll be uh, a relatively easy target for us. So we should just be able to pick it out just way out there. We can see. Uh, Dieter, go ahead, man the man deck the gun. Because we're going to give this to Max. Because, can I have a head? Thank you. Because um, we did dump some more training into Max. He should be... Why did the tooltips disappear? Anyway, he should be uh, relatively fit and ready to do this. Calm seas, it's just going to be a matter of getting nice and close. And Slow slowing speed our speed down. Actually, we can Minimum probably go as slow as we want. Um... How many knots is that going to be? Six knots on an intercept course? Yeah, that should be just fine. This guy's still coming straight for us. That is good. That's exactly what we want. What do we got? Five kilometers out. Still much too far uh, for my liking for the deck gun, uh, specifically for Max to be doing the shooting. So let's... Get slightly more aggressive. Yeah, you can dipsy doodle all you want here, sir. You're not you're not running away from this. So, Max, open up. There you go. Keep it like that. Mm, I'll forgive that. That's fairly close, and you're aiming for a different section on the ship. That's fine. Go back to the superstructure. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think you got this, buddy. I mean, we're close enough now. 
that this should not be an issue for you. And yeah, this should be this should be a nice simple sinking for the crew. I mean, hey, they wanted success. They wanted victory. And uh, apparently our raid on Scapa Flow and the convoys we've sunk so far have not been enough victory to make the crew feel confident in our abilities. So uh, I'm giving this kill entirely to them to prove to them that they've got the training, the skill, and indeed the iron will to force victory on the British. Look at that, we've already got a fire going. That's just lovely. That's just... Well, that's two where you're aiming a bit too high, Max. Knowing the way the gunnery works, you probably got your range set to between six and eight kilometers out. So, you know what? That's not a surprise. But look at that! She's dead already! What was she? I mean, nothing as big as the as the ship that I sunk, but it's a Yukel, almost 4,000 tons. We'll take it. Um, taking a look at the ship, I think we're doing okay. Obviously, I pulled the reserve in. Uh, I think we're doing relatively okay. Our fuel's looking good. Our torpedoes could certainly be looking better, but what can you do? And let's just check our shells, because I'm not even sure what kind of gunnery Max was doing there. Uh, high explosives. Okay, so yeah, we still have plenty of ammunition. We shouldn't even have expended any of this. We should have plenty of this too. I don't know where I see it, but we should have plenty of that too. So that is good news for us. Let's go scoot over. Check this bad boy out. Blowing off the mast is always fun. And looking right into that ship with what looks to be like a hell of a lot of blood on the wall. Um, that's new. I, I didn't know that that was a possibility for us to actually get, you know, kill shots. Who knew? Uh, anyway, I think this is going to be a good enough place to leave the episode today. <laughs> Certainly uh, a less anger-reducing episode. Oh my god, just give me my head. Thank you. A less anger and frustration episode. Then last time, I think definitely staying away from the RAF is a good idea. Um, regardless, let's give this a save. Thank you very much, game. And exit to Windows. So thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. It looks like we failed the Eastern British Coastal Waters. Uh, I'm fine taking that failure on the chin because, let's face it, that mission would have been just super annoying with all of the RAF we would have to deal with, but we certainly have completed the first deployment, which is good, and breaking the fortress, so we're like 50-50 for missions, um, but 178,575 tons of ships by, what, late November? Yeah, the BDU is still liking us, 21 merchants, 8 warships, there is no way that they could say that we're not doing a good enough job for the fatherland. We're doing a fine job, despite the fact we don't sink ships maybe in the right location. Regardless, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.